What's your name? Caleb Prue. Caleb, where are you from? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Isn't that a famous place? Um, Within Mormonism? Uh, not, not so. I, I believe there's a visit. I forget who it was. Maybe one of the Pratts went through Columbia once and recorded a vision there. But I'm not an authority on it. It's along the Susquehanna, but far from the uh, priesthood sites. So it's known for its Amish people. But. Oh, Lancaster, that's right. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your... Um, your perspectives today on your personal spiritual journey and specifically within Mormonism? Hmm. Well, in, in, a, in the context of the church, I, my, my, grow, my bringing up was a little unusual compared to like perhaps an average Mormon because my father was excommunicated. And uh, he... He was a convert to the church. My mother was a convert when she was 14 with her family. Um, my father was excommunicated um, basically for apostasy, um, believing that he was, he ought to be in leadership in the church. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so growing up, uh, he was very angry about the church and vitriolic at, at points and a lot of personal problems between he and my mom. He's kind of a controlling person. Um, believed in a very patriarchal order and uh, so at a, kind of at a young age like I I had I, I would hear a lot of what we typically you know call anti-Mormon stuff so by the time I was I could say of age or you know as I was going into adulthood I'd already heard a lot of things and you know anything with the Sol Solomon Spaulding manuscript to blood atonement to church history you know so I'd heard those uh, growing up and kind of had to to reconcile or deal with those. As far as my personal journey, um, I uh, I went I uh, I went uh, in '99. I started at BYU, and um, I also must add that I'm, I'm from a um, my dad's family was a good Catholic Democrat family, so we grew up liberal which is always like we viewed as something that set us apart from, from other Mormons, even back east. Um, so I always kind of felt different from mainstream Mormonism, and that was pretty apparent when I came out to BYU. And then uh, uh, when the Iraq War started, and I, I bring up the story because I, I feel it's kind of central to, to who I am, but when the Iraq War started in 03, I believe, um, I kind of did, attempted some anti-war uh, at, uh, organizing on campus because I felt like the issue of the, whether we should not, whether we should go to war or not wasn't really being talked about and um, I wasn't very successful in, in really starting a dialogue on campus um, for a variety of reasons so I really kind of bumped up against uh, provincial close-minded uh, attitudes that a lot of uh, conservative Mormons have and I felt a lot of uh, hate Honestly, a lot of hate directed towards me from the BYU community and the Utah community at large. And uh, subsequently left BYU um, after I had been arrested in civil disobedience up in Salt Lake. And uh, it was rather big news, at least in Utah. Most people have forgotten about it now. But that, for me, was a big challenge because I, although I wouldn't say my testimony was very deep at that time, uh, I really did have to, like, I did have to emotionally process a lot of feelings of bitterness towards um, Mormons in general. And uh, subsequently went on my mission. I went on my mission late when I was 23 and served in Nevada, Las Vegas. And that was a, before my mission I had a crisis of faith, um, realizing that I had not really gained as strong of a testimony as I needed to go on a mission to really teach the gospel, to preach it. and. Uh, which I think is a little different than teaching. So I had a pretty intense um, spiritual experience where I had been fasting and praying for about a week straight. Um, and up to that point in my life, it was probably even more so than the loneliness I felt being at BYU um, as someone who felt with, at, uh, my feelings were at odds with the BYU community. This was even more so because it had to do with like my own spiritual well-being and I, it was like the darkest spiritual point in my life up to that point. 
and uh, praying to get an answer whether the church was true or not, really whether there was a God or not. Um, I think it was a culmination of a long process of being lost spiritually and uh, got, a, got a witness of the Spirit at state conference um, that was pretty dramatic for me, which sustained me throughout my mission. And uh, my mission was a very rewarding experience. And there was a point, uh, there was a point on my mission where I, I know it sounds bad, but I really didn't care if the church was true or not, or the doctrines were true, because it made me, being a missionary and believing, because I, I think a lot of belief is choice. There's a lot of choice involved in belief. Believing and, and being a missionary made me the happiest that I've ever been in my life because it gave me like purpose and direction. And uh, so I feel, I felt at that time, my testimony was based a lot on loyalty. And I don't think that was a bad thing. Like I, I really um, do love the church for a lot of things and feel like I should, I will always probably be loyal to it. I don't know if I've gone beyond the scope of your question. <laughs> it's kind of a long story. What do, you I, love, what do you love about the church? Uh, I, one thing that I love about the church, as others have said, is the community. And I, I just, I love it that we have to, especially for someone who finds themselves out of mainstream political thought for Mormons, I love being challenged and like trying to find a place within the community, reconciling those things, you know, having to deal with that tension. Um, for example, on my mission, as you taught people, and they might have to go to the bishop to talk about things or maybe get an exceptions interview for, you know, serious transgressions. My experience as I watched bishops and members of my mission presidency, I was impressed with how loving and kind they were and uh, in helping people uh, repent. And I looked to that as something that I, that really impressed me and that I really value, you know, um, in my own associations with bishops. So I've always felt, I've always felt loved by those who are in a position of authority over me, like my bishop, and, uh, and also the opportunity to develop, to develop charity like home teaching with, with callings and, and the like. And just uh, learning to love, I think, is what the church is an opportunity for us to do that. And there's other things, but that's, that's my primary one. Um, are there times in your church experience where you struggle or are there things that frustrate you or you wish might be different? Certainly. I think um, being at odds with the BYU community, to, to put it in, in a short form, was, was really hard for me because I, I had to reconcile. It was an opportunity for me to turn away from the church and blame the church for what, how I was treated, I would say. So that was an opportunity for me to like rise above that, which was a difficult thing, but I, I, felt, I feel that I did that. So coming up against uh, attitudes that I felt do not represent the type of values and the type of life that the church really does promote in their members is always kind of a struggle for me. Um, but I also view it as a good opportunity. I've had, I've had issues with doctrine. However, um, I would say that many of my doctrinal questions, for the most part, I've come to terms with, mainly through personal experiences with the Spirit, mainly through feeling love from God, reading the scriptures, praying, and having those experiences where those things I can fall back on and recognize that I'm not going to get all the answers to my questions in this life, but putting faith in God. I really do believe that the, the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. Changed my literally changed my life, and I believe in the existence of God because I, f I feel like I felt His love, and those things sustain me when I do not understand when or when I feel at odds with membership of the church. Do you wish that, do you ever wish that the church maybe had a different or um, more um, a stronger position about the war or war in general? <laughs> I certainly wish 
that they could perhaps be in a position to strongly oppose the war. I perhaps would say that they may not feel themselves in that type of position, that they have that luxury. Um, it really depends on what you view the church's role as. I certainly was, I could say, that I could honestly say there was some disappointment on my part. My bigger disappointment, however, was really just with the BYU environment. Why couldn't we talk about it? Why couldn't we hear opposing viewpoints? Why is that so bad? So it's more of the, it's more of the, um, my mother calls it intellectual inbreeding that you might find at BYU um, that is more offensive to me um, than, you know, whether or not the church took a strong stand on it. Because I, you know, the, the leadership of the church has to accommodate many different types of people, conservatives and liberals alike, Americans, non-Americans. So I appreciate their position and, and the delicacy of their position. So when you think about your, your personal spiritual creed, what are sort of the pillars or the tenets of it? Um, I, I, feel, uh, I feel like something that is important to me is that I live a determined life. Um, one of my big determinations now, and this has developed only recently, is uh, to, to always be, always throughout my life, be committed to progress personally, spiritually, coming closer to God. Um, because I view coming closer to God, well, let me paraphrase a quote uh, by Joseph Smith where he said, we really don't comprehend who we are until we comprehend. We don't really comprehend our nature until we comprehend the character of God. So I see that as the, the path of knowing oneself is, is literally the path of coming to God because I believe he can show you who you really are. And, uh, and I've had experiences where I feel like that. I, I do also believe in tension, um, to borrow Ashley, uh, Ashley Sanders' phrase, um, choosing of word. I, I, I relish being uncomfortable um, uh, because it spurs me on. And as far as... Uh, certain values of the church, or from, particularly from the scriptures, I like the focus on developing charity and love and becoming committed towards God and towards others and uh, learning to love them as God does. So I guess that would, that would constitute my creed right now.